to pull in as close as you can. Um, one of the things that has really picked up since we opened Section 2 is people use this as a commuting run, which I think is really great. Um, and one of the bonuses of the fact that it's raining is the park is not that crowded today. So. Um, so I had a couple good questions on there. One was um, along that walk. One was where do we get our plant material um, and who chooses it? So the entire park was designed by a team. Um, the lead architect was James Corner Field Operations. They're a landscape architecture firm here in New York. Um, and they worked really closely with Pete Udoff, who's a Dutch plantsman. He specializes in herbaceous um, materials, specifically prairie plants. Um, they also worked with Diller, Scafidio, and Renfro, and they were they did kind of the structural elements of the park. I would just ask you to pull in a little more. I know it's hard with the umbrellas. Um, so everything was planned and, and chosen by that design team. Um, it was then contracted out to a company called SiteWorks to make the design happen, and they subcontracted out to Kelco to do all the planting. Kelco pretty much does all the planting of parks in New York, as far as I can tell. They're doing the 9-11 uh, Memorial, they, they did Brooklyn Bridge Park, they just, they have a very large team that they can come in and plant in big, in vast quantities in a way that we could never do it. So, as gardeners, I didn't start until the park opened because they had this landscape contractor who did all the planting. Um, one of the really common, I'm just, Normally our tours have a lot of history, but I'm gonna kind of focus on plants for you guys. Um, so one of the most common questions we get is about how we water the plants. Um, in the first section of the park, there's a drip irrigation and it's only around the trees and shrubs. Um, the herbaceous material is watered by rain or when we don't get enough rain, we hand water it and we often like last summer we got so little water that we were setting up like lawn sprinklers in the beds and it's a huge uh, kind of challenge because you can't, it can't go too far over the high line that way, it can't go too far out of the bed onto the path this way, so. What is the drip connected to? It's uh, the city water system, I mean it's Down. run up in pipes, yep, okay. and then it, it runs along the back, there's a main that runs along and then it branches off. In section two we have a complete grid throughout the entire bed of drip. Um, it wasn't necessarily done because of problems that we found in section one, just because it was seen as insane if we didn't have it. And when we first learned that, we, we thought it would be horrible, but then after last summer we just thought, wow, imagine you can just flick a switch and water the entire bed. And I would honestly say both, prop, both, both uh, circumstances have their problems. Um, we have a rain sensor in this section that as soon as it's rained half an inch, it kind of clicks on. So if it rains half an inch, it turns off the irrigation, but then as soon as that half inch dries, it comes on again. So if we get like six inches of rain, it starts to water it again. So you kind of still have to be there, you know, on top of it, whether to turn it off or not. Um, this gravel mulch, was a, a design choice by the design team. They wanted it to reflect the stone ballast of the um, railroad tracks. It's beautiful. It's really light and it's a royal pain if you're actually trying to <laughs> dig a hole or do anything. So, but that at the same time, like we have, we have some areas that we are trying to get away from the gravel mulch and I'm starting to see pros of it, you know, there are some plants that we have down in section one that don't um, self-seed, but they really do up here where we don't have the gravel mulch, so again, you know, good points on both sides. Um, the whole park was planted to be reflective of the self-seeded landscape that set in when the train was not in use, um, and somebody asked me if if we were going to go further. There's a third section of the railroad. We'll get up there. It's at 30th Street. It's called the High Line at the Rail Yards. And that still is that kind of self-seeded landscape. It's beautiful. It's still owned by the railroad company. And the city is, is currently negotiating with the railroad company and the developer of the rail yard space 
um, to try and obtain that third section to make it part of the park. Is that Hudson Yards? Yeah, the Hudson Rail Yards, yeah. There's a big development plan for above the rail yards, and that's the developer right. who's involved in the negotiations. I, I mean, I, I don't know how involved Friends of the High Line is. I'm, I am not involved, so. <laughs> 